stealth games, aren't they exciting to play? There's just something about taking out a group of cards unnoticed that tickles my fancy. But the downside is that they are very expensive. And because I'm a broke student who doesn't have enough money to buy such games, I thought to myself, well, I like making games, and I've made a bunch of games before, so why not make my own stealth game? And how about I only get, hmm, say, 24 hours to make it? What? 24 hours only? Are, are you crazy? You, you, you want me to suffer? Hmm, well, I think it sounds reasonable. Hell, this guy made a whole GTA 5 clone in 24 hours. Nah, 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 I'm not doing that. There's no way I'm doing it in 24 hours. That, that's just crazy. Mm, okay, okay, maybe I'm a bit too strict. I'll give you seven days. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds that sounds better. I think I can do it in seven days. All right, let's not waste any more time and actually start making this game. Now, before we start, let me introduce you to my best friend, Mr. White. He's the foundation on which all my games are built upon. Each time I start a new project, he is there to kickstart the development. Without his help, I would not be able to develop my games. So thank you, Mr. White, for, for being here. I really appreciate you. And I appreciate you for smashing that like and subscribe button. Now, you might be asking yourself the question, what makes a good stealth game? Well, that's a good question because I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Well, I guess most AAA stealth games have some kind of advanced guard AI. But since I'm working on this game alone, I need to finish it within a week. We need to go the easy way out. One way we can get our guards to move is by having waypoints which they have to follow. This way we can easily control where the guards are going. After that I added some simple player controls as well as a flashlight for both the player and the guard. Having added the light got me thinking of the brilliant idea of having the map totally black. And you could control your flashlight with your mouse, so you could see where you're going. Not only did this make the game more immersive, it also gave me a reason not to focus on any textures, as you would not be able to see anything anyway. <laughs> now we just needed a way for the guards to detect the player. I, as the perfect programmer that I am, of course knew how to implement this. Which was, of course, by going into YouTube and searching a video tutorial on it. To my surprise, I found this video from Sebastian Lake, who actually had a perfect video about guard detection, which really helped me out. So check out that video if you're more interested in how the guard detection works. I try to learn something new every time I make a game, so I thought adding some post-processing would be nice for this game, as I had never done it before. The tutorials I had watched said you had to add the post-processing package to your project. So that's what I did. But for some reason, this didn't work. It turns out that my dumbass also had installed the Universal Render Pipeline package, which is not compatible with the post-processing package for some reason. So there it was. I'd finally figured it out. I had removed the post-processing package, but for some reason, it was still not working. One hour later. Yeah, so all I had to do was to enable post processing in this box. Awesome, now it's finally working. Now I can choose all these cool ass effects. Hmm, let's try lens distortion. Like, what is this? Oh my. <laughs> oh my god. Bro. Like, I don't know about you guys, but Mr. White do be looking kind of thick. Now that the lights were looking all pretty, I also wanted them to cast some shadows, because, you know, that's a typical light thing. The thing is with Unity, if you want a light to cast a shadow, you need to add a shadow caster to the object. The problem is, this doesn't work if the object is a tile map. I could just add rectangles like I had done earlier, but that would be way too easy. After some research on the internet, I found this post on Reddit, and someone had made a script which would automatically create shadow caster objects for the tiles on a tile map system. So, if you don't mind, I'll just borrow this little script right here. Now that the game was looking pretty and we had our guard AI, it was time to design some new levels, as I didn't really have any yet. Doing the levels design made me think that I needed some new mechanic, since the game would be pretty boring if the only thing you could do was to avoid the guards. 
See, in most stealth games, it isn't just about avoiding the guards. It is also about taking them out. So, behold. The giant laser of doom. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's not exactly how I want it. There we go, that's much better. It's still a bit buggy, but I'll fix it later. This laser would of course be way too powerful if you could shoot it as many times as you want. So my plan was that you could only shoot it once per level. So you had to think about when you had to use it. I then made a level where the player would unlock this laser. It would then show this nice little dialogue on how the player could use it. So I was messing around a bit and suddenly thought to myself, what if I could push a guard around when they have been taken out? So I tried that and it looked really cool and funny. <laughs> Up to this point, I was thinking that the guards were like dumb little robots. They were moving in repeatable patterns and had limited vision. So when seeing that one guard push the other one, it got me thinking of another idea. What if, when a guard pushes another guard for too long, it will overheat and then get taken out itself? So I made a level where the player had to utilize this mechanic in order to beat it. It was then time to polish the game up a bit with some animations and sounds. First off, I wanted to add a nice little indication when the player got spotted by the guards, which I of course got working first try. By the way, that bug took so long to fix, and the way I fixed it was instead of setting the angles of the object, I had to set the local angles, as the object was a child of the guard itself. I then also made some particles when the guard got disabled. It was now time to add some stealthy tunes to the game. I used Busca Kill, like I usually do when I make music, but the program crashed like three times when I tried to use it. So I instead decided to switch to a different program called LMMS, which had way more complex features and was not as intuitive as the previous program I used to use. So I had some difficulties making the music sound good. But I think I'll be able to make better music in the future with this program as it provides way more functionality. And yeah, talking about switching programs, I also switched from JSFXR, the program I used to make sound effects, to a program called BFXR. Why would you do that, you might ask? Well, I mean, just look at the difference. BFXR has way more buttons, which obviously means it's better. I implemented the sound effects that I made, which didn't really go well on the first try. <laughs> and lastly, I made some final levels and added a start menu. And that's pretty much it. That's how I made a stealth game in seven days. If you want to try this awesome game out yourself, there's a link in the video description. It is totally free to play and you can play it from your browser. And if you're interested in my horrible source code of the game, you can do so on my GitHub. Link can also be found in the description. Anyway, that's it for me guys. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to not miss out on any future videos. Bye bye.